Hi guys and dolls, these are my Lunasar contemplations, or my Lamas contemplations, depending on which word flicks your particular switch. Um, I've always favoured the word Lunasar, and I think that the Celtic story and the Celtic god associated with it, that's quite inspiring, but lately I've also been into embracing the words that are more associated with the standardised Wiccan Wheel of the Year, so Ostara, Maybon, Lamas. Um, those words seem to be used more often for those without kind of an association to the Celtic slash Gaelic path. And I'm really liking those words as well. Obviously, Lamas is the Christianised version of Lunasar. It means loaf mass. And it was basically when they were appropriating slash embracing the Christian um, culture and festivals, etc. That was kind of their version that they had. And they had Candlemas for Imolk and so on. So, <clears throat> so... Yeah, I'm um, I'm a fan of Lamas, so I'll probably call this Lamas Contemplations, but Lunasar, same thing. Um, when I do my videos about the Wheel of the Year, my Contemplations videos, I'm probably not going to carry it on into next year, or I'll probably do something a bit different next time. Um, but I've I know that I do not talk a lot about the history, and I don't talk a lot about you know where the cultural associations are and how it all got started. I, I more talk about the themes and energies that I feel are invested into the festival for me, from my perspective. So I'm going to carry on in that vein. And the interesting thing for me about Lammas is that I actually have a strong association from childhood with the Harvest Festival because I went to school in a tiny little town in the middle of uh, deepest, darkest Hertfordshire where, you know, we still did things at school like dance around the Maypole and did country dancing on the first day of May and, you know, we had all of that kind of thing instilled into us. So we always had a Harvest Festival every year at around this time. And the Harvest Festival just basically consisted of a great big assembly in the hall with lots of hymns and different things happening, uh, different people doing performances. But one thing that always really struck me, and the parents would, would come along as well, it was like a full day of entertainment. And one thing that really struck me about the harvest festivals that we had at my primary school was that there was a great big emphasis on giving. Um, we had, uh, every year we would have a piece of paper that we would take home to our parents that had a list on it of appropriate things that could be sent in shipments to Africa for the needy. So you'd have like canned, canned goods and packaged goods and all these things that were suggested that, that make great cargo and that, you know, are most useful for those people. And we would all bring something in, we would all bring boxes in of stuff and on the assembly table there was like a great big long table at one end of the hall and all of the all of the stuff used to go on there so it was like we were always considering during our harvest assembly and our harvest festival those who were less fortunate and those who hadn't reaped the reward of a good harvest and that really made an impression on me so a lot of the time with Lammas, I always think of it as a time for gratitude. I think of it as a time to really consider the nature of the extreme abundance that I'm um, I'm living inside of and that I can take advantage of and I also think of it as a time for giving I think of it as a time for volunteering I think of it as a time for giving my energy and my resources to other people um like I I just I feel more inclined towards putting my energy into places where other people need help for example I've offered to help my mum for three days with this great big job that she has to do um I kind of became aware of the magnitude of this job the other day and I said you can't do this on your own I'm going to need to come and help you I'm going to come and stay with you and do it and I think that even though of course you know I, I love the people in my life and I try to help them as often as I can there's always this underlying association with Lammas to remember to be very grateful for what you have to be grateful for your health to be grateful that your body works as well as it does um and to just get some perspective on the sense of the sheer amount of energy and resource emotional uh, and physical that you can give and you know it's obviously important to be aware of your boundaries and your limitations but I always feel this sense of really wanting to um to show my gratitude by giving my energy and my love and my reserves out towards people who need it and so that's always kind of stuck with me I suppose that sense of charity and also the sense of community for me Lammas is about community if you think about how the townspeople would come together in the old days when it was kind of still very relevant to have a harvest festival which really for a lot of us unless we're growing our own stuff it doesn't feel as relevant these days I suppose in in the immediate sense in terms of how we live our lives but if you can imagine the townsfolk getting together and actually um involving themselves in this organizing this harvest and having everything come to bear and having to stock everything for the winter and having to work out where everything was going to go and 
I just think there's this incredible sense of um, like buzz and community around it. And that was what the Harvest Festival kind of gave to me as well. The way that we all pulled together, we pulled together to do the assembly and we pulled together to make the little corn, corn gods that we made. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a very, uh, it was a very pagan school, <laughs> apparently. Um, yeah, we pulled together for all of that and um, we pulled together to get all of this food and all of this stuff to send off. So there was this sense of community. There was a sense that we were in it together. And in terms of my own life and the way it's kind of structured at the moment and the way it's become for me, I like to think of Lammas as a time to associate with where I am in my own community and where I am with the people that mean something to me and with the people that I am surrounded by. And I like to think about how I can be a better person in terms of my relationships with those people and how we can help each other and how we can get past any issues. Uh, I really like to think about how beautiful it is that we can spend time amongst our fellow human beings. So this kind of community slash charity and gratitude thing, maybe a lot of people don't really have that, but because of the way that I was raised and the things that happened when I was at school, that's kind of something that I've, I always have in my head at Lammas. Um, I also think a lot about actions and consequences, you know, I think for me, I think about harvest in terms of figuratively, you know, you reap what you sow kind of thing. And I, I tend to think back to Beltane when there was this incredible creative drive, this urge towards manifestation. I always think of Beltane as the art festival for me. It's the festival where I really want to get into something. I want to I want to put both feet into the mud of creative endeavour. And I sometimes think during Lammas about that time and I think about what's happened since that time of creative drive to now. What is it that I've actually amassed? What is it that I've actually sown in terms of seeds from my creative energy? And I look at the lessons that are inherent in that. I look at what I can learn from what I've managed to amass and what I've failed to amass or what didn't go quite right. Um, I like to think as well about actions that I've taken in other aspects of my life and areas of my life and think about how they've come to fruition or how they've actually worked themselves out. I really like to use Lammas to reminisce, not in a maudlin way, not in a way that's kind of like self-deprecating or self-loathing. I like to use Lammas as a chance to check in and kind of look back out of interest really I suppose, out of curiosity and give my thoughts to some of the things that have come up for me so far during the cycle of the year and where that's led me to now. I feel harvest is a, is a time to kind of recognise that what you're going through in the present is a result of what's happened in the past and your response to what happened in the past. So I really like to give that my consideration at Lammas. And, you know, there's another thing about Lammas, Lammas and Mabon, or Mabon, however you want to say it. Um, I like Mabon, personally. I favour it that way. Um, I, I, I notice with these two festivals for me, I don't know if this is true of anyone else, I suppose it depends whereabouts you live. But for me, a lot of the energies and the themes involved in these festivals in the Wheel of the Year are dictated partly by the weather, by what the weather's doing. And, um, you know, if you're in the UK, you're probably laughing right now <laughs> because uh, we do have such an obsession and such a concern with this. It, it's, it's idiosyncratic. It's a very original little situation we have here in England. And um, I never complain. I never complain about the weather in this country. In fact, for the first time in my life, finally, today, this morning, I meditated in a thunderstorm for a full hour. And it was magical. It was magical. So yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain about the English weather. But I do notice with Lammas and Mabon that I, I don't tend to think about things like the shortening of the days and the lengthening of the shadows and the return towards the dark half of the year and that kind of thing, that vibe that I get, that Samhain vibe that I so get. I don't get that if the weather's not really doing that. Like at the moment for me in this country, um, I don't feel like the days are getting shorter yet and I feel like it is light very early and I feel like there's still this incredible potential for more sun and so I'm not really thinking so much about that day shortening, shadows lengthening as I like to call it, uh, which is where I start thinking about really going into some deep shadow work, going into astral projection on a more constant and significant basis. I do a lot more of that kind of thing in the dark half of the year. And I would say my practice gets just a, a hell of a lot more damn occult during the dark half of the year. So um, it's not really like that this year with me. That's not what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, I mean, we only had a thunderstorm a few hours ago and it's already beautiful again outside. Um, in sunny, a thunderstorm is beautiful. 
Thor came through for me. I've been begging him to come back for about a week and he finally rolled into town. Oh, thank you. Thank you, old ones. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sunny and everything right now. So I think that the weather gives me that sense of what exactly it is I'm tapping into with Lammas and Mabel. And it depends what's happening on any given year. What else do I like to think about? With Lammas, I get this feeling of transience and I find that comforting. I find it comforting to think about the fact that nothing is constant, that everything is, is in flux and that the energy of everything changes. The energy never dies, it just reinvests itself, it transfers itself into something else. As a pantheist and as a monistic pantheist, these concepts are very important to me and Lammas gives me that perfect chance to tap into how I feel about that because I think about the fact that the grain grows, it's, it's in its um, genesis, it's in its primordial, tiny primordial soup, if you will, self-contained, biodiverse, bio-universe, and then it comes up through the ground and it kind of leaps into this challenge of life and it goes through all of these twists and turns of reaching up to the sun and it's beautiful, it's in its potency, it's expansive, it's a stunning piece of architecture all on its own and yet it's so interconnected to everything else and then it dies and then it dies and it becomes something else entirely and the whole process, the whole cycle of life begins all over again. These are very expansive thoughts for me. I love the chance to contemplate on this kind of thing and think about what it brings me to in terms of my own life and the challenges I'm facing in my own life and in terms also of the very real inevit inevitability of the death of my earthly body and of my personality as Kellyanne Maddox. Um, I love thinking about that. I think when I was younger, it maybe scared me somewhat. It made me maybe made me feel insignificant um, or terrified or helpless. But now it makes me feel plugged in completely. Um, it's strange, really, that when you think about Samhain and how literally Samhain ties into the concept of death, it's strange that Lammas for me should be such a death a uh, scented festival that I should think so much about um, death and rebirth and the cycles continuing and letting go I think with the harvest for me a lot of it is about letting go it's about letting go of old shit but it's also about letting go of the sense of control that you have over the here and now and over the ego and over your desire for things to remain constant and your desire to have control over what's happening and your understanding of what's happening I feel like there's this big sense of relief where when we see when we see things like the harvest we think about how the cycle is constantly changing and about how decay is inherent in all component things as the buddha said and I I love that I love that kind of um that kind of consideration so yeah community I think it's about and gratitude for me a lot of the time hard work <laughs> uh, definitely the work I'm going to be helping my mum do for the next couple of days is going to be hard it's going to be hard, but uh, I, I, I just feel like getting my back into it at Lammas. And I feel like if it, if it gives you that chance to connect with other people at the same time and collaborate and help each other and urge each other and spur each other on, then I think that's got the Lammas energy running right through it. I really do. I think that that is a very special and potent part of what Lammas is about for me. Oh, God, the strawberry and raspberry. I've only got three tea bags of it left. That's how much I love it. I'm going to have to go out and get more. Okay, so these have been my Lammas contemplations. I would love to know if you have any similar feelings about the energies and themes of Lammas um, or what your kind of viewpoint is. And I've been eagerly scrolling through my feed, having a look at everybody's Lammas videos and stuff. Um, a couple of things to say. Firstly, I'm a little bit behind with emails, guys. So if you're waiting on something for me, I am not ignoring you. I promise. I just need to kind of get my act together a little bit. Um, and secondly, a few people have asked again lately, where the hell are my book reviews gone? Or can I do a book tour? Um, okay, two things about this. Firstly, I'm not planning on ever doing a book tour of these, of these bookshelves. The reason for that is um, I try to keep my channel fairly on track. And on this channel, I like to talk about spirituality and personal development. Um, I like to talk about tarot, but of course that ties in with both of those things anyway. So um, with the bookcase, I do actually, my reading is really broader in scope than that. So there's history on there, there's biography on there, there's social commentary, politics, uh, well there's all kinds of things on here. Art, fashion, food, I really don't think a lot of it's relevant to the channel. So I do appreciate that you guys want to break down and that's great, you can probably see some stuff 
here, Arab Spring, Ivan's War, which is about the soldiers, the Russian soldiers in the Second World War, Nietzsche, Chomsky. I'm annoyed with him because he recently slagged off Zizek. I don't know if anyone knows what that means, but... Uh, yeah, I've got a River Out of Eden by Richard Dawkins, my favourite arsey atheist. So, you know, it does kind of, it spreads itself out quite a lot. So I'm not planning on doing a book tour. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to start doing my book reviews in bulk. And as a result of that, I've been a little bit held up <laughs> because I'm currently reading like five books. No, I lie. I've got five books to review. I'm still reading two of them for the kind of wicker and witchcraft side of things and then I'm also still reading The Women Who Run With Wolves which I really want to review and there's this other book that I eagerly want to read before I make the review so stick with me and eventually I promise you there will be more books and I will be talking about more books. <laughs> I am reading, I'm just not finishing and uploading so I will get I will get to it and those of you who would like reviews of Prime Chaos and Condensed Chaos by the adorable and very splendid Phil Hine they are coming, they are going to be part of the review so I'm so excited to once again be bumming on about chaos magic whether you like it or not. <laughs> Blessed be, much love.